advocate for the Southeast region of the North Carolina Coastal Federation. As advocate and the voice for our coast, I work at local, state, and federal levels to ensure that actions are taken to safeguard North Carolina's water quality, coastal environment, and economy. When I'm not at work at our Southeast office in Wrightsville Beach, I spend as much time as possible at the ocean. I love to swim, paddle, and beach comb. So today, I'd like to talk about a few of my favorite shells that we're lucky enough to find right here in North Carolina. One of the first questions I'm often asked about seashells is how are they made? Are they formed with sand swirling around in the ocean? Well, every seashell that you pick up is actually made by a living animal called a mollusk. There are thousands of different types of mollusks living all around the world, but the ones that make seashells are a type of snail. All mollusks are invertebrates, meaning they lack a spine or backbone like we have. And there are seven different classes or types of mollusks, but we're going to talk about two today that we find here on our beaches. The first class of mollusks I'd like to talk about are called bivalves. Now these animals have two shells that are hinged together. So just like a bicycle has two wheels, a bivalve has two shells. Let's take a look at some of our bivalves found here in North Carolina. First is the Sunray Venus. And as you can see, it's actually two shells hinged together. This is important because since mollusks are invertebrates, they're soft and squishy, which makes them vulnerable to predators. It's important they have these shells that can close up tight and keep them safe. We also have angel wings, venuses, calico scallops. This is the eastern oyster and the Atlantic giant cockle. Cockle actually comes from the Latin word from heart because when these are hinged together, they resemble a heart. Now, have you ever been walking along the beach and found a shell that has a perfectly round hole in it and think, oh wow, that would make a great necklace? Well, that hole was actually made by another type of mollusk called a shark's eye or a moon snail. And this guy is a predator. He has a sharp radula that he uses to drill into the shell in order to eat that animal. So for example, with the Sunray Venus, the moon snail would come along and drill right up top here near the hinge because that's where the muscle is on the inside of the shell. So once that muscle was released, the shell would open and the moon snail would have himself his lunch. The second class of mollusks I like to talk about are called gastropods. Now the name gastropod literally means stomach foot. And this is a very fitting name because most gastropods are pretty voracious predators and they have a very strong muscular-like foot that they lose in locomotion. And they can actually move surprisingly fast. So let's take a look at some of our favorite gastropods here in North Carolina. This beauty is called a ton. They're not near as common as they are in some areas of the Outer Banks, but when you're lucky enough to find one in the Wilmington area, this is a helmet. Here we have a lightning whelk, a channeled whelk, and a knobbed whelk. Now you might be thinking, how can we tell these whelks apart? Especially the lightning whelk and the knobbed whelk, because they're very similar. The colors and size might be a little different, but they have the same spiral knobs. Well, I'll tell you a trick. The lightning whelk has an opening on the left side. So lightning starts with an L, just like left. Or the knobbed whelk has an opening on the right side. And most shells open on the right side, just like most people are right-handed. So a lightning whelk is kind of like a left spiraled or a left-handed person. The channeled whelk looks kind of like a wedding cake with these channeled grooves. We have a pear whelk. This is a banded tulip. Bonnie showed you one of these in the marsh on the first video. This is a scotch bonnet. And this shell is special because it's the state shell of North Carolina. Just like we have a state bird, state tree, state fish, this is our state shell. These are eastern augers, and they are shaped like this because they burrow and drill down into the sediment. In the animal kingdom, everything is for a reason. If an animal or a shell has a certain shape or structure, I can assure you there is a function assigned to it. These are lettered olives. We see our shark side moon snails that we saw earlier. These are called baby's ears. 
Some shells, as you're learning, have funny names that kind of resemble something else. Now, have you ever been along the beach and you found something like this that looked kind of like a leaf? Well, each one of these is actually called an operculum and they act as a door to help protect the gastropods from predators and protect them from drying out. We learned that the bivalves can hinge their shells close together, but gastropods, they can't do that. And so when they have an opening, they have this operculum attached to their muscular foot and they can close it shut like a door to make sure that they don't dry out if they're taken out of the water or that they don't get eaten by another predator. Now, one thing to note, a lot of people mistakenly call these whelks conks. And so I wanna show you a conch. Now this one is not from North Carolina. This is from the Caribbean. But conchs, they have a similar spiral structure, similar knobs to these whelks. But the big difference lies in the edges here. So you can see this is a nice, smooth flange. And that's because of what they eat. Queen conchs, like this one, are herbivores. They graze on plants. Where a whelk has this sharp edge here because they are predators and they're carnivores, meaning they eat other animals. When these mollusks are itty bitty, they have itty bitty shells that look just like the larger ones you may find at the beach. As the animal grows, the shell grows with them. Like a turtle, these animals can't leave their shell. It's with them forever. When they die, other animals like hermit crabs may move into their shells and start to call them home. Most shells are made up of calcium carbonate. This is a material kind of like your teeth or your bones and it gives them a nice hard shell for protection. So you might notice that shells are kind of different in color, sometimes slightly different designs and patterns. Their main structure is in their genetics. A calico scallop like this will always have these general colors and the general patterns. But as you can see here, we have six calico scallops and they all look a little bit different. How bright the color is, or some variations in color depends on the salinity and the temperature of the water. When waters are warmer and saltier, shells are able to grow quicker. That's why you sometimes have the larger shells or brighter colored ones like this queen conch down near the tropics. You can tell a lot about a shell based on its habitat and where it's grown. Remember, these shells are all homes. So if you do choose to take one home with you, make sure that no one is living in it. It's pretty easy to spot if a mollusk is still living in a seashell, but sometimes if a hermit crab has moved in, they can bury themselves deep inside to stay safe. So if you do take a shell, set it on the ground and leave it there for a little while to see if it might walk away first. And remember, beach coming is always a treasure hunt. You never know what you're gonna find.